your typical bull here and um, today I'm going to show you how I set up my scanners and my uh, scanning platform here on Thinkorswim for free so you don't have to pay for trade ideas or use FinBiz. This helps me to find um, intraday momentum tickers and I'll show you how I do this layout. Uh, just kind of a guideline there. Um, I'll show you all my relative volume scanners, my high day momentum scanner, and my 10% squeeze scanner here. And these are basically the only things that I use to trade um, lower cost uh, momentum stocks and um, things like that. You can adjust these to make them work with um, options and uh, higher price stocks as well fairly easily so um, I may show you how to do that just you know kind of quickly as uh, like a side note there but um, <clears throat> who knows we'll see when we get there so first off let's figure out <clears throat> the scanners here so basically I use three scanners but one of the scanners I use on several different time frames right so the first one and I'll just load it and show you is just a standard relative volume scanner um, So this is fairly simple. <clears throat> what I have here is you click this button here, you go to category, and then all stocks, wherever the hell it is, um, somewhere in here, industry, right there, all stocks is under category, all stocks, leave these other two things blank. So then you want to add a filter for stock, you would just click add filter stock here, and then you scroll down to volume. I set volume to 250,000 with no maximum. <clears throat> and then you add another filter per stock, which would be stock, and then you scroll down to last price. I like them to be $1 to $10. <clears throat> and then the study part here is custom. Um, this is on a daily time frame to start with, and I'll just bring this up here, it's fairly easy. <clears throat> you just add a filter, add study and then you go down here to custom and then click this edit button and then what we're looking for is study right here this drop down box and then relative volume standard deviation right and this one's pretty simple as well and then you just put is greater than and uh, this number you can mess with a little bit um, greater than Select a condition, value, let's do 1.5, right, within one bar, right, I think that's right. Yeah, greater than or equal to 1.5, and then click the OK button. Relative volume, standard deviation. Uh, this is actually a little different than mine. So <clears throat> let's do this way. There you go. This code right here, I'll just leave it up for a second. You just copy it. <clears throat> it's um, <clears throat> a custom script. It's a very simple custom script. So if you'll just copy this uh, plot signal relative volume length 50 is greater than or equal to 1.5. So this means that relative volume over the past uh, 50 bars is greater than 1.5. And uh, that's about all there is to that. So the very first one, <clears throat> you leave the aggregation today. And then you just save that scan as, I save it as rvol1 to 10. Right, and all the rest of these scans are going to be exactly the same. <clears throat> so this one is for, I use that for the one day for the 15 minute all you have to do is click this little box here and push 15 minute and click the extended hours box everything else stays exactly the same and then do the same thing for the one hour the 30 minute and the five minute right see one hour extended box checked everything else is exactly the same <clears throat> Now, the next scan is a 10% uh, squeeze scan. And there it is. So this one's a little different. What this does is it finds stocks that have been that have squeezed up 10% over the past one five minute bar or more. So it'll find things that are moving very quickly. <clears throat> so for this one, 
same thing, all stocks. Stock price last. Uh, I have this set to $0.25 cents to $2 to $20, and it seems to work fine. But you can change that as well to uh, $1 or $0.50 cents or whatever you want. Minimum volume, add filter, stock, scroll down, find volume. Minimum volume is 100,000 to maximum, no maximum. And then <clears throat> next thing is study. And then you go down here to uh, price performance, price change right there. Price close is at least 10% greater than 10 bars ago on a five minute chart, right? So you click five minutes, click the extended hours box, <clears throat> and then study unusual volume. That'd be under volume, unusual volume. Current bars volume has increased at least 25% from its typical average over 50 periods. So that means it's high relative volume. Same thing here, five minutes, extended hours. And then the final scanner here is a high day momentum scanner. What this will do is it'll find stocks that are near the high of day that are only positive on the day, right? So first off, <clears throat> Same thing, stock price, last price. I have this one set from $1, $20. Minimum volume of 250,000 shares traded on the day. This is gonna be a scanner that you use after the market's already opened, right? Because you would be using just a regular old pre-market gap scanner prior to that. <clears throat> and then what I have here, shares. So this is the shares outstanding. The minimum is zero. And I have the maximum set to 300 million so I only want to see stocks with a float of under 300 million and personally you can bump this down to like 50 million 100 million but I just kind of like to see a wide wide picture of everything and then I can just because I can filter out pretty easily the things that I don't want to trade but if you are prone to just grab anything and everything you may want to lower this number to about 100 million or 50 million <clears throat> to get only the very best and then next thing I want net change to be positive or nothing, right? So anything that's negative, that's what this filter here will do. It'll bring out only things that are positive on the day. So only things that are break even are positive on the day. <clears throat> so that's stock filter, and then it would be under just the regular old net change tab. You have to scroll down a bit here. <clears throat> so that'll give you only things that are greater than zero net change. And then after that study, we're looking for price performance. And then you do near high lows. And what you want is within 4% of the current one period high that is set to a daily aggregation period. This will only find stocks that are within 4% of their high on the day. And then <clears throat> what we're looking for is the same unusual volume current bars volume increased by 20% from its past 50 periods on a five minute chart. And this will create the high update momentum scanner, <clears throat> right? So now how do we get from basic charts to this? Let me load a separate workspace here and I will show you <clears throat> how to set all this up because basically the default is gonna look like <clears throat> this. So this is your basic default, right? So first thing first, let's add all of our scanners, right? So we'll have our standard regular watch history. And what we'll do is, first of all, we'll change that watch list to the um, daily standard deviation. And we'll make it smaller. And then what we want to do is add, down here on the bottom plus, we'll add several other watch lists. So let's do... Where is it? Watch list one, watch list two, watch list three, watch list four, and then we'll do five there just to make sure we've got enough room for everything. So this one is the daily high volume, high, high standard deviation volume. Now what we'll do is we'll change this watch list to <clears throat> the one hour. So daily, one hour, then we'll change this one to the 30 minute, 30 minute, and we'll change this one to the 15 minute, then we'll change this one to the five minute, 
and we'll change this one to the 10% squeeze. And we're going to need one more watch list. So we're going to have to make these a little smaller here. Oop, now we can add one more watch list. And then we'll change this one to the high day momo. <clears throat> now, now, from that point, what we need to do is, let's make this guy just a smidge bigger. Right, so let's shrink one of these dudes here. So that away. Now, what we do is click this setting here little setting tab customize I want to take out oh it's already set up right so you want all of these to be set up the exact same way last volume percent change and then relative volume standard deviation so the only thing that is going to be different here is that when you type relative and then relative volume standard deviation you'd click that and then the length is 60 <clears throat> right so that's pretty standard so now you can sort these lists by volume percent change and relative volume and then you do that for all of these so this one customize will take off the net change the bid and the ask just by double clicking them and then we'll put volume in and then we'll do percent change And then we'll find relative volume standard deviation. Oof, just leave that as default. OK. Now we can sort this by relative volume. Sort that by relative volume. And we want to link this to 1 because this is linked to 1. This is linked to 1, right? So now, right now if we click on it, nothing happens, right? Click on a symbol. But if you click this little link symbol and link it to 1, when you click on it, poof, it's on your chart. See? That's what we want. We'll link this one to one as well and do the same thing for the rest of these so customize we'll take off net change bid and ask oh there we go and then we'll put volume percent change and relative volume standard deviation Click OK do that for the other ones as well one so I sort all of these scanners by relative volume. And then accept the last two. And we'll show you when we get there for how those are sorted. So last, now we'll do volume. <clears throat> Percent change. Oops. And relative volume standard deviation. Okay. Do that for the last two. Customize. The last three, rather. <clears throat> last, do volume. Percent change, relative volume standard deviation. Click OK. I'm just going to fly through the rest of these here. Make sure you link them. OK, so the last two here, I sort those a bit differently. <clears throat> so same things here as the other ones. Come out of there. But. I sort these by percent change instead of the relative volume. So first up, volume, then we'll do change, and then we'll do, <clears throat> I still like to see the relative volume, but I sort these by percent change instead, right? So that'll put the highest gainers on the top, make sure you link them, <clears throat> and that'll put just the, the highest percent gains on top and that's what I want. Make sure you link it. 
And then last one here, we'll do last. Oops, I screwed that up. That's okay, I can fix it. So, last. <clears throat> Volume. Percent change. And finally. Relative volume standard deviation. Poof, there we go. Now, sort this one by percent change as well. And you can make these different sizes according to, you know, whatever you like. If you don't want to see, like, the, the daily all the time, you can shrink them like this and make your other ones bigger. But, like, <clears throat> so, like, the daily one, that's what I do a lot of the times. Like, I, these aren't going to change throughout the day most of the time. <clears throat> so, you know, after first couple 20 30 minutes or so you can change you can just shrink the daily one down that we have more room for the other ones that are actually going to be working for you in your day so <clears throat> now how do we now we're going to get our chart to you know better and i'll show you the one custom indicator that i use on this as well <clears throat> so first off you'll click right here one two three four boxes now we have four boxes and what we want is show sidebar in cells right so just type in some random symbol and we'll link all of these as well to one link to one <clears throat> link to one link to one so now this is what we have so first of all let's just click a random symbol oops Let's use HTGM. First of all, what we'll do, this is set to the one hour time frame. We'll click here and we'll change this one to the one day, one minute. Now, we have a one day, one minute chart here. Now, what we're gonna do is go down here and click off of news. News is gone. Click here where it says chart. Click chart. And this one will make Five day, five minute. Now we can shrink that. Oh, wow. Okay, there's some studies here that I want to take out, so we'll get rid of the studies. Uh, edit studies. Those should not be there. Right. Okay, so now all the studies are gone. <clears throat> now, same thing here. News, get rid of that. Put a chart in. This one, one hour. Let's do customize. We'll do add a time frame, intraday. Let's do 10 days, one hour, add. And then that's the one we'll use here, 10 days, one hour, apply. Okay, so this is now a 10 day, one hour chart. And it has some studies on it as well that we'll need to take off. I don't know why that's doing that, but Okay, now, no studies on that chart either. Okay, so now we can shrink down the hour chart by just going to the center here, and we'll drag it down just a smidge. So that way our one-minute chart is bigger, and our five-minute chart is bigger, right? So now we have a pretty prominent one-minute chart here and a pretty prominent five-minute chart here. And on this part, I also like to have the trade tab open. This is like an active trader tab. So now what you can do here, right, is set up custom orders. So... I'm not going to go over how to do this, but you can set up custom orders here, like buy market, buy the ass, sell the bid, sell the market. And then I have like an order set up here for two different targets of buy a certain amount of shares with a dollar target and then certain sell half of them and then sell part of them. But that's not necessarily necessary unless you're actually trading on Thinkorswim, right? So if you're not trading on Thinkorswim, just leave that part off. But if you are trading on Thinkorswim, that active trader tab is something that you want to look into. Now, so what we want to do here on this one, we're also going to take off the news, click on time and sales, right? Now we've got a time and sales chart. Now we also want news and level two. So now we have a time and sales window, a news window, level two window, right? Everything's good. Looks great. You can size that appropriately. So now there's that. Now what we need to do is add our indicators. So studies, edit studies. And I have a volume bar indicator called dual volume bars that I use and I'll show you that very quickly. 
So if you just want to scroll through and copy all of this code, I'll just leave that here for just a few seconds so you can see the code. If you copy this exactly, you'll have that custom indicator. Pause the video, screenshot it, whatever you need to do, and that'll give you this dual volume bars indicator. Right, so it's fairly straightforward. I'll even make it bigger where you can see the whole thing at one time, right? So that's the, all of the code there. <clears throat> if you just write this into your ThinkScript editor word for word and then save it, that'll give you the dual volume bars indicator. Okay, okay, so let's go there and we'll add that dual volume bars. And then what I want is exponential. Uh, let's just go ahead and add VWAP here. So we'll add VWAP. View up. So I'm going to edit this. I don't want the upper band to show at all. So I click on the upper band, show plot, turn that off. Click on the lower band, band show plot, turn that off. Now the actual VWAP is the only thing I care about. And I want to leave it standard. And what I want to do is change that to white. Style white, you can change that to whatever you want, but I like it white. So I've added a VWAP. Now what I want is an exponential moving average. Exponential moving average. Moving average exponential right there. So I had four of these. One, two, three, four. First one, nine day, stays exactly the same as nine day. And I make that a dark blue color. <clears throat> so there we go, dark blue. And then after that, 21 day, I make this a dark red color. Okay. Oh, shit, I clicked cancel. Uh, same thing, dark red color. Okay, 21. Okay, now what we need is a 50. 50. And I make this one a dark green color. Click OK. And then the 200. And that one is a dark gold color. More. Apply. So now I have. Oh, wow. Why is that volume in there still? Uh, the studies, edit studies. Put this one in, slap that up in the volume slot. That's what happens. So you just replace your volume bars with that volume bars, and then poof, there you go. Now, now we're there. So now what we can do instead of redoing that whole thing for all of this, we can go to studies, edit studies. or I'm sorry, studies, save study set. And we can just name this like uh, uh, standard EMA, like STEMA. So let's just name it STEMA. And then we'll go to studies and we'll load a study set. And then we'll do find STEMA, there it is, poof. Now we've loaded that study set onto this chart as well. And then we'll do studies, load study set, STEMA. There it is. And now that is the whole kit and caboodle. So now we have all of this linked to the same thing. We've got news, we've got all of our scanners here, we've got our momentum scanners, and look, everything. One more thing we need to do is go to settings. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? chart settings and it would be saved zoom chart scale uh, where is it I don't remember it's in here somewhere chart settings uh, time axis it's gotta be it's save zoom level keep time zoom right there under time axis that away every time we switch tickers, it won't go back to 
a completely different time frame, right? Which is dumb. Same thing, we'll do that with this one here as well. We'll go to chart settings, time axis, keep time zoom. So that way, when we zoom in to a specific like time frame, like point in time, like if we only want today's pre-market and today's entry day, when we switch tickers, it'll keep that, right? So that way we don't have to redo our zoom every time. And that's pretty much all there is to it, right? Yeah. If you want to zoom out, you can use these buttons or you can use this button or auto zoom. Right, so now, kind of just see how this works a little. See, every one of these tickers on the high day Momo are going to be within five minutes of the high. Like some of these aren't good, but like this one could have been a good one. Of course it is lunchtime, so nothing is really happening right now. Like this one just kind of popped out, but if the volume's not good. Uh, I'm not gonna go over how to actually trade the setups, but like 10% squeeze, like five minutes, this has went pretty good. This one, I'm not really sure. Like you can see, most of these on the 10% squeeze are looking, are up fairly well and could set up at some point during the day. And then same thing here with all of the relative volumes, like these just change on their own as the time goes by. Or if they're not updating in the time you like them to, you could just do it, just click over on your scan and then click the little scan button here. So it's everything currently. That's not even the right scan. There it is. There you go. Just click on it, click the little scan button, and poof, there's a whole list there as well, if you like it that way better. And you can change this as well by clicking Settings, Customize, and then Symbol, Description, uh, Last Price, Net Change, Percent Change. Uh, volume, relative volume. You could take the bid off, the ask off. You could take the high off. You could take the low off. Take the high off. Take the low off. Take the earnings off because we don't give a sh crap about any of that. We could take the volume off, and then we can put in um, like shares outstanding here. Hmm, float maybe. So percent change, 52 week high, 52 week low, empty, ATR, um, ask size. You can put any of this stuff in here that you want. If you care about the RSI, you can put the RSI reading in there. You can do whatever you want here. Company address, custom. Number of days left expiration, delta for options and things like that. So what I'm looking for is outstanding shares, but I'm not sure if that's in here or not. It, sh it should be in here. It's got to be like, like you can put the market cap in there. That's kind of important. If I could PNL, uh, what I'm looking for very quickly is the If I just type in outstanding, no. There we go. Shares. Poof. There. Now I can see the outstanding shares as well. So market cap, outstanding shares, relative volume, volume, percent change, net change, last price, ticker symbol. And then that's basically all there is to know about this, right? So now, there you go. You've got my thinkorswim setup for all of the low float tickers. One minute. You can even do this to where you set it up like two different charts instead of 
but I like to look at the time and sales and have the news and everything on the same page. And this way I can see the one minute chart, the five minute chart and the one hour chart. So like right off the bat, I know like this thing is crap and I don't want to trade it. Boom, summit, look at there. High day momentum scanner. And this huge, huge setup there for just, mom just a few moments ago, right? And you can see straight out of the go that if this breaks this 440 level, you got a rim to 540, right? So, and that's basically all there is to it. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, if it did, please click the subscribe button, like, comment, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.